Starship has yet to launch, raising the question of what happened and when the next attempt will be. SpaceX and Elon Musk shared some updates, though not the detailed briefing many expected. Meanwhile, Dragon CRS-33 has arrived at the ISS, and Blue Origin has set a new schedule for its delayed new Shepard flight. All of this shapes today's episode of Great SpaceX, where we look at what's next for spaceflight. Indeed, it feels as though SpaceX is pushing all of our emotions to the limit. The long-awaited flight has not yet taken place, and we must continue to wait just a little longer. After the first scrub caused by an oxygen leak at the ship quick disconnect system, SpaceX wasted no time in addressing the issue and quickly rescheduled for the afternoon of the 25th. Their response demonstrated the same speed and determination that has always characterized the company's operations. This time, everything seemed to progress smoothly in the initial phase. The go command for propellant loading was given, and fueling began for both tanks. Unlike the previous attempt, no leaks or anomalies were reported and both tanks were fully loaded. Excitement grew as the countdown continued, with many expecting to witness Starship finally take flight. However, at T-40 seconds, the operation came to an abrupt halt. The countdown was paused for a final check before the official go-for-launch decision could be made. Then, just as hopes reached their peak, the scrub was called again. According to the launch hosts, weather was the culprit, Shortly after the attempt ended, SpaceX posted on X, standing down from today's flight test attempt due to weather. Starship team is determining the next best available opportunity to fly. Musk followed with his own update explaining, Launch called off for tonight due to anvil clouds over launch site, meaning lightning risk. This is not entirely unexpected. Leading up to the attempt, SpaceX had already cautioned that weather conditions were only 55% favorable for launch. The heavy clouds above the site were clearly visible during the countdown, signaling the risks. Factors such as high winds, dense fog, and lightning could have all posed hazards, and Musk confirmed lightning risk as the deciding factor. With safety as the highest priority, the attempt was canceled and effectively became a wet dress rehearsal. While it is Disappointing that such a critical test was scrubbed for reasons beyond human control, this is the reality of spaceflight. Weather has always been unpredictable, and it has canceled many launches before. For SpaceX, safety must come first, even if it means another delay. Now the team is expected to try again as soon as the 26th, with additional windows on the 27th and the 28th. Given that both the vehicle and launch system are already in good condition, there is still a strong chance that Starship will fly before the month ends. It's also worth mentioning the dedication of the SpaceX team. After the oxygen leak issue on the 24th, workers immediately carried out repairs overnight, allowing the system to be ready for fueling just hours later on the 25th. Other organizations might have needed days or even weeks to return to the pad. So while delays can be frustrating, they are also a reminder of the hard work and persistence behind the scenes. Starship's moment will come, and when it does, it'll mark another step forward in humanity's journey to space. If you are still standing by, show your support by saying, I'm still here, and continue following SpaceX's path forward with us. In this latest launch effort, the process of Flight 10 was not the only point of interest. The updates shared during the event were equally significant, providing a broader look at SpaceX's progress and future plans. One of the highlights was the rare appearance of Musk at the host's table during the live stream. Sitting alongside him was Bill Riley, SpaceX's vice president of Starship Engineering. Normally, Musk can be found in the control room with the engineering team during critical operations, so his presence in front of the cameras hinted that something special might be in store. That expectation was not misplaced. During the broadcast, SpaceX showcased a wide range of content. Workers preparing next-gen vehicles in the assembly bay, new V3 grid fins and ring sections in the Star Factory, engine tests, orbital refilling simulations, and even Mars City concept art all highlighting how Starship fits into SpaceX's broader mission. But perhaps the most striking reveal was a new animation showing how Starship itself might one day be caught by the massive Mechazilla arms. The video depicted Starship descending from orbit, igniting its landing burn, flipping into position, and then being guided into place by the chopsticks. This 
The scene was dramatic and inspiring. About a year ago, SpaceX had drawn a similar 3D animation of a booster being caught by Mechazilla, and that vision became reality. If history is any guide, we may eventually see the ship-catching attempt come true as well. Should that succeed, it'll mark the beginning of full reusability for both stages, a milestone that could change the economics of spaceflight forever. Another fascinating detail revealed in the animation was that the ship is slated to be caught by Pad 2 while the Super Heavy Booster lands at Pad 1. This setup underscores the critical role of Pad 2, which is currently under construction, in enabling simultaneous recovery of both stages. The vision of a two-stage catch highlights the sophistication of the system SpaceX is building. Beyond the live stream, SpaceX also shared several updates on its official X page. One standout was a video about Starlink technology showing how the satellites function in orbit, what components they use, and how the manufacturing process works. Musk himself described it as laser in space, highlighting the satellite's ability to achieve precise laser tracking in space at 4,000 kilometers distance while moving at around 25 times the speed of sound. This extraordinary capability represents a leap forward in space-based communications. SpaceX also introduced Starlink V3, which will be deployed by Starship. According to the company, Starship will deploy the more advanced V3 Starlink satellites with each launching launch adding more than 20 times the network capacity of current Falcon 9 flights. The video illustrated the full process from Starship's ascent to the opening of its payload door, the deployment of satellites, and the return of the vehicle to Earth. It was a compelling reminder of how closely Starship is tied to the future of global internet connectivity. Musk shared a striking photo from beneath Starship's engines, showing all 33 arranged in a clean, orderly layout that suggests strong reliability. Though this is only the Super Heavy V1, future upgrades with V3 and Raptor 3 engines promise even greater performance. The image also offered a rare look at the underside of the orbital launch mount, notable for its impressive organization. Another eye-catching update was a concept image of Starship on the surface of Mars. This version of the vehicle featured some notable modifications, including a functional payload door to support the deployment of large cargo. Most strikingly, this Starship was shown with landing legs, a crucial addition for the first missions to the Martian surface. Alongside the image, SpaceX announced Starship is built to deliver millions of tons to Mars. We're now offering Starship services to the Red Planet, recently signing our first agreement with the Italian Space Agency. The announcement marked one of the clearest signs yet that Starship is being positioned as a truly interplanetary vehicle. Despite all of these exciting updates, Musk's discussion before the second scrubbed attempt was fairly brief. He shared some valuable details, but the much-anticipated technical update he had promised was not delivered. Musk explained that he plans to go over progress to date and engineering, production, and launch plans for the future in a dedicated presentation. For now, that event will likely take place only after Flight 10 is successfully completed. Though Flight 10 has yet to launch, the attempt offered a glimpse of what lies ahead, from Starship's catch system to Starlink V3 and Mars ambitions. The full technical update will be worth the wait, giving a clearer picture of Starship's path. Until then, we watch with anticipation. Alright, well that wraps up the Starship update. Now, let's shift our attention to another important mission, the Dragon CRS-33 resupply flight to the International Space Station. On the morning of the 24th, SpaceX successfully launched its 33rd Cargo Dragon mission. After spending 29 hours in orbit, the spacecraft arrived at the International Space Station and docked smoothly on the morning of the 25th. The precise docking time was 7.05 a.m. Eastern, coming in 25 minutes earlier than originally scheduled, which highlighted the accuracy and efficiency of the mission. For this flight, Dragon carried more than 5,000 pounds, or roughly 2,270 kilos, of critical cargo. This included food, supplies, and a wide variety of scientific experiments designed to support the astronauts and researchers aboard the station. These missions are not just routine deliveries. They're essential for the continued success of life and science in orbit. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy shared a statement after the launch, emphasizing
emphasizing the importance of these missions for the future of human exploration. He noted that commercial resupply missions to the ISS provide science that helps prove technologies for upcoming Artemis lunar missions and beyond. This particular flight is especially exciting because it carries experiments that will test 3D printing of metal parts and even bioprinting of tissue in microgravity. These advancements could one day give astronauts the ability to manufacture tools or medical support systems on demand during missions to the moon or Mars. Imagine the potential. Instead of waiting for a resupply ship, astronauts could print what they need directly in space. CRS-33's arrival highlights Dragon's vital role in sustaining the ISS. Its reliability stands out as other cargo craft face delays and setbacks. Beyond delivering supplies, Dragon now helps reboost the station's orbit, a task once handled mainly by Russia's progress. With Russia planning to exit the ISS program by 2028, Dragon and Cygnus will take on greater responsibility for keeping the station aloft. When CRS-33 returns in December, it'll bring back experiment samples and scientific gear, underscoring Dragon's unique role as both a supply ship and a return vehicle. We're almost at the end, but before we wrap up, let's briefly look at Blue Origin's recent update. The new Shepard NS-35 mission was originally scheduled for launch on August 23rd. However, a problem with the booster's avionics forced a scrub. Blue Origin later confirmed that the new launch target is August 26th at 7.30 a.m. Central Time, just three days after the initial attempt. By the time you're watching this, the mission may already be underway or completed, assuming no further delays have occurred. While New Shepard's return is notable for Blue Origin, it remains on a far smaller scale than SpaceX's Dragon or Starship, which lead in orbital missions, ISS support, and interplanetary goals. NS-35 may launch before Starship Flight 10, but they operate in very different leagues. Still, Blue Origin's progress will be worth watching as Dragon CRS-33 continues proving its value to the ISS, keeping the space industry dynamic and exciting. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.